Um, with me this evening is Dr. Olusheye Arikawi. You're welcome to this uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, our discussion this evening, we're going to be exploring the role of sugar in health and the effects of sugar on our health. But let me just say a few things about Dr. Olusheye Arikawi. Dr. Olusha Yarika is a general practitioner with special interest in diabetes, women's health, medical education, and medical research. She's a member of the Royal College of GP and a diplomate of the Royal College of Gynecology and the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health. She has various certificates in diabetes care. She's a GP trainer and also a registered trainer for the Reproductive and Sexual Health fa Faculty. She currently works as a GP partner in a large training practice where she runs the Diabetes and the Family Planning Clinic in UK. She is also the lead GP for medical research in her practice. So you're welcome, Thank Dr. You Arikawi. Thank you. Okay, so this evening we're going to be talking about sugar. But I think it would be nice if you can just uh, give us a brief introduction of what it means to uh, be healthy, to live a healthy life. Okay, so thank you so much. I will just start by defining what health is. Okay. The WHO says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So when we talk about health, it's a whole package. You know, it's not just saying, oh, I don't have any illness, I don't have any disease, but are you physically well? Are you mentally well? Are you socially well? So health is a full package, not just one thing. Okay. Um, but in exploring the effect of sugar on our health, um, we're going to be looking at it in an holistic way to see how sugar affects us, not just physically, but mentally, um, socially, emotionally. But um, if you can just take time to explain to us what, um, when you talk about sugar, what exactly uh, do we mean? Okay. So sugars are a type of carbohydrate. Okay. So the sugars are actually sweet tasting soluble carbohydrates and they are found naturally in some food. We find sugars in the fruits and that's what we call fructose. We can also have sugar in our milk and that's lactose. Okay. So sugar occur naturally in the food that we eat. When we refer to sugar, most people actually is talking about the table sugar that we put in our tea. So that table sugar actually is what we call sucrose, and those are commercially made. So basically, sugar is carbohydrate. And what happens to carbohydrates? Carbohydrate gets broken down as glucose. So when we talk about sugar, we need to remember that we're talking about carbohydrates. Okay. So is it carbohydrate the way we know it, like maybe carbohydrate in bread, pasta, potato, what about uh, in fizzy drinks, like in um, maybe Coke, Fanta, or uh, orange juice, or in biscuits and pastries? Right. So, you know, I said sugar are naturally found in food. Okay. But we also have what we call refined sugars. And those are the ones we find in our cakes, our biscuits, our sweet, our fizzy drinks. So the ones we really need to avoid are the refined sugars because obviously it's difficult to avoid the sugar you find in your food so what we need to know that yes we can find sugar in the food we take we need to eat the food obviously we need the food for energy so we just need to look at how do we if you have the understanding that there's sugar in the food because some people say i don't take sugar so really but you eat rice you eat carbohydrate <laughs> so we're saying sugar is actually carbohydrate Okay. So the fact that you don't put that table sugar, you know, I said table sugar is sucrose. Yeah. You don't put that in your tea. It doesn't mean you don't take sugar. 
you still have sugar in lots of the food we eat. So that's why we need to be careful not to add, have added sugars in our fizzy drinks, our cakes, those ones are actually what we call refined sugars. They're not natural in the food. They're actually refined, they're added to the food. Okay, so is it possible to take too much sugar that, uh, that we, uh, from the food that we normally, we regularly eat? Is it possible to consume too much sugar? Yes, definitely. So what, what we are saying that there are lots of eating sugars in food. So we need to be aware. Uh, like I said, there's some that are there naturally. You can't really extract them from it. There's nothing you can do about it. But there are some that are refined. That's the one we need to look out for when you buy your food in the supermarkets or the grocery shops. You cannot be looking and see what's the content of the sugar in this food and to avoid that. But the way to avoid taking too much sugar is to limit the quantity of the food we take. If, for instance, we say you have sugar in most of the food we eat, then if you take large amount of those food, that means you're consuming large amount of sugar without knowing. You know, maybe you're saying, oh, I've not put sugar in my tea. Or you've taken like a full loaf of bread that it's, you know, you actually eventually get broken down into sugar. So that's actually taking sugar without knowing. Or you've eaten a full, a large plate of white rice, for instance, and you say, well, I don't eat sugar. But you've just eaten a large plate of sugar. Um, of, of rice. So if that gets broken down, the rice gets broken down, there's glucose being released. So the way to limit the quantity of sugar we take is to limit the quantity of the food we are eating. Especially the carbohydrate source. Apart from, carbohydrate, yes. apart from limiting the consumption of refined carbohydrates, which comes from uh, the pastries, yes. uh, the fizzy the drinks, the cakes, yeah. the biscuits. Okay, those ones are refined carbohydrates yeah those are okay. refined sugars that we need to avoid them as much as we can as much as possible yeah. but the ones that comes naturally in food we also need to limit the quantity yeah the quantity okay so what is the effect of uh too much sugar in the system what effect does it have on us okay so i'm going to describe this by saying Let's assume you've taken food, for instance, whether your breakfast or your lunch. Most of us, our breakfast will probably be bread. Lunch will probably be something if you come from, especially from Afro-Caribbean, probably be something like rice or yam, potatoes, you know, starch. So if you're taking any of those food, what happens to the food we eat? Look at it this way. The food gets broken down into glucose. And just imagine, think about it like this. Glucose means sugar, in a sense. Okay. okay, so when the food we eat gets broken down to glucose, our body senses that we have a high level of glucose in our blood. What the brain does is to send signals to an organ in our body called the pancreas. The pancreas produces an hormone. The hormone is called insulin. Okay, so the job of insulin is to take the sugar that is in your bloodstream and store it in other parts of your body and uses that for energy. Okay. So naturally... The sequence is that you eat food, it gets broken down into glucose. The body says, oh yes, I've got glucose. So insulin, you need to do your job. Pancreas release insulin, okay? And the pancreas will do its job. If in normal situation, that's what happened. Pancreas will release the insulin. The insulin then take the glucose and then put it in the right places, get it stored, where it's going to be used for energy. That is when everything is in the right sequence. Okay. So what happens? So let's say, for instance, you've not taken too much of the sugar. Okay. okay you've taken large amount, and um, the body is saying, okay, yes, insulin, be released, do your job. And the insulin starts to struggle because the amount, the quantity of the sugar in the blood is so much. Yeah. And if that happens repeatedly, what happens is that uh, after a while, because when you have excess of sugar in our body or glucose, I'm going to use them interchangeably sugar or glucose, it gets converted to fat. Okay. So some people say, oh, I've cut out all the fats in my body, in my, in my food. I don't eat any fat. Fine. But you're taking large amounts of food that get broken down to glucose. The glucose then gets converted. Excess glucose, think about it this way. Too much of glucose or sugar, you get converted to fat. Okay. And where does this fat go to? The insulin is also known as fat storage hormone. You know, I said the job of the insulin is to take the glucose and get it stored in areas in your body where you use it for energy. 
Yeah. When you have the large amount of that glucose, what happens is that the insulin, we then convert that to fat, and it gets stored in our body. The places it goes to is our liver and our pancreas. And that's why some people say maybe they've done an ultrasound and they say you've got fatty liver, which means you have large amounts of deposits of fat around your liver. Also, this excess glucose that gets converted to fat can be actually stored in your pancreas as well. Okay. If this keeps happening, you know, I said that the pancreas is where the hormone insulin is being released. Yeah. If there's too much fat around the pancreas, that's what also leads to what we call abdominal obesity. People say, I've got too much fat around my belly area. Well, the way to get rid of that is to cut down on your glucose, cut down on your starch. So if you have too much fat around the pancreas, after a while, the pancreas will start to struggle. It will get to struggle that will not be able to do its job. So the more the level of glucose in our blood, and because of the fat around the pancreas, the pancreas will then struggle to produce the insulin. And then if the pancreas is not producing the insulin, or if the insulin is not doing its job as it should, then we said it's, it's becoming insulin resistant. One of the cause of insulin resistance is too much fat because of the excess glucose and because the fat is being deposited around the liver and the pancreas. And so the pancreas is struggling. The insulin can't do its job as it should. And so what happens if the insulin is not doing its job as it should, the glucose then gets accumulated in our bloodstream. And that's why they said, okay, I've done a blood test. I've got high level of blood sugar. Okay. And because you are not meant to have that high level of blood sugar for too long, because lots of damages it can damage the blood supply to lots of organs in your body. And that's actually what leads to what we call type 2 diabetes. So basically, mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes is caused by what we call insulin resistance. And one major cause of type 2 diabetes is actually excess fat around the belly area, what you call abdominal obesity, which has led to problems with the pancreas, causing what we call insulin resistance. Okay. And that's actually what leads to what we type 2 diabetes. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Apart from that uh, type 2 diabetes, what other complications can result from too much sugar in the bloodstream? Okay, so on its own, having a type 2 diabetes on its own is one major thing that can lead to a lot of things. Okay. okay, we said the cause of it is because your insulin has become resistant. And because of that, then you then develop type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes on its own is a risk factor for developing heart attack and stroke. Okay. okay, type 2 diabetes is a risk factor for developing problems with the kidney. It can cause kidney failure. It can lead to what we call retinopathy, which is problem with the eyes, and it could also lead to blindness. It can affect the blood supply to your lower limbs, and people can end up having things like neuropathy or things that could, it could cause problems with you having repeated infections. And if that's not looked after, it can, look, it can lead to amputation. It can affect the vascular supply to the lower limbs. We can also cause major problems. So type 2 diabetes on its own is just one thing that can lead to lots of other things. Also, too much sugar, like I said, that can cause the obesity. We know that the problem with obesity is it could, most of the cancers, especially in women, breast cancer is actually one of the risk factors is obesity. If you have obesity, which is means it could also lead to things like arthritis. You know, you can have problems with your joint. Um, it can lead to cancers, can lead to diabetes, can lead to kidney problems, can lead to heart attacks, it can lead to stroke. It's a whole load of things. It's just to avoid that vicious cycle. It's like to cut it so that it doesn't end up with all of these things that we're talking about. Staple food are carbohydrates. So how can an individual regulate, you know, how will you know the quantity of carbohydrate that is safe the, quant the level that will be okay, that will not shoot your sugar level, you know, to a higher level that makes it become risky for your body. Okay. So we're not saying that carbohydrate itself, it's all bad in itself. Okay. So what we need to think about is that we need to think about what we are, the food we are eating. We need to not just eat food because of the way it tastes or the way it looks. We need to think about what's this food going to do for me. Of course, I understand that we, you need to eat something you enjoy. You know, I've seen most people saying to me, you mean I shouldn't have this, I shouldn't have that, and what's the point? I'm not going to enjoy the food I'm having. 
Okay, there are lots of very good carbohydrates, which we call non-starchy carbohydrates. Okay. They are non-starchy in the sense that this kind of carbohydrate, they don't release the blood sugar too quickly. They will release your blood sugar slowly so that your pancreas can cope. I mean, God gave you the pancreas to give you, to produce insulin so that the insulin can regulate your blood sugar. But the only issue is if you, the, if the load, the glucose load is so high that the pancreas is struggling, that's when there's a problem. But so if you look at it like... The examples of the non-sugar, non starch okay. yeah. non starch non carbohydrates, yeah. Carbohydrates. So for instance, when we say no, unfortunately, most of the food we have in the Afro-Caribbean are starchy carbohydrates. Are starchy, okay. okay. <laughs> so the non starchy one are going to be things people are going to say, what are you talking about here? Broccoli, cabbage, you know, those kind of food, sweet potatoes, you know, you know, those kind of food that most vegetables, people don't know that vegetables are actually carbohydrates. Okay. okay? So your cabbage, your broccoli, they are carbohydrates, but they're not starchy carbohydrates. Okay. So because our food, most of us are not used to eating, you know, others veg, we're thinking, no, I can't have that as my main food. I'm not going to feel fulfilled taking those kind of food. So we're saying that, yes, even if you have to take the starchy carbohydrate, then in moderation, and then you mix it with something else. So they can be your side, and your main food will be, you've got lots of your veg there, or your meat products, maybe your poultry, or your organic, you know, lean beef by, by the side with plenty of veg, and you put a small quantity of your, if it's going to be rice you're going to have, or you could have an alternative to rice like the burger wheat, you know, that would be in smaller quantity. As you know, that usually in our community, we do it the other way around. Yes. You know, the veg will be something tiny by the side and with and a the large bowl of starchy carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. <laughs> and so, and the more we do that, the more our pancreas are really struggling. And that's why, if you notice that there's a high, high incidence of type 2 diabetes in the Afro-Caribbean community. And I believe strongly that that's actually due to the food we take. Yes, I know there are lots of causes of the diabetes. Most of some are, some are genetic, some are due to other things. But yeah. type two diabetes, the major cause of type two diabetes is insulin resistance. And what causes insulin resistance is too much fat around the belly area. And what causes that fat around your belly area is too much glucose that we get from the food we eat. So I'm not going to say. I think it'd be a joke to tell somebody from that community that you can't have your rice. Obviously, that's what most people have. But it's not, but it's, most people would have it like morning, some people would have it like morning, afternoon, and night. That's a bit too much. It's a high load of glucose or carbohydrate for your body to handle. If you just think about it this way, that the more I give my body this load of glucose, the more my pancreas is going to be struggling. And if you keep struggling, it's going to burn out, going to burn out after a while. So you just need to reverse the equation a little bit by switching things over. I know it may take some time, but with time, gradually, our body will get used to that. So if you're saying that if you take, if you reduce your quantity of your carbs and make sure that you have something else by the side so that your carbs will be your side and your main dish will be something else like your, your poultry, your chicken, your lean beef, it's your, it's your main with plenty of veg, and then your carbs is just like a small quantity by the side. That would help. That would help your pancreas to cope. That would also help if I reducing your carbohydrates actually leads to weight loss. And I know lots of people that have got type 2 diabetes have gone into remission. There are lots of my patients that maybe I put them on a low-carb diet and slowly their pancreas start to improve, the okay. insulin starts to do its job, and we slowly have to take them off their medication. You know, And some of them now, they are not on any medication, their blood sugars have gone back to normal, and we say they're in what we call diabetes remission. In the past, we say once you've had diabetes, that's it. No, not at all. Now you can actually go into remission. And as long as you maintain that weight loss, you would continue to stay in remission. Okay. Once you start to gain the weight again, of course, the diabetes will come back because we know yeah. what caused the diabetes in the first place. Okay. Um, what's the, uh, is there any link between diabetes and age? Well, you, the, the link between diabetes and age is, you know, Okay, let's say you started this, this sequence of the food you are eating and yeah. you, you keep, you know, giving so much glucose load. And as you know, as you get older, especially women, as you get older, we start to gain weight. And we gain the weight centrally. 
Okay, so the older we are as women, because older people also become a bit more sedentary, we don't do yeah. any much exercise, we don't go out, then probably start to gain weight. And so, if you remember what we say, it's the reason, the cause of the diabetes, eventually, if you gain so much weight, and then you develop what we call insulin resistance, and the pancreas not doing its job, that would then lead to diabetes. So that's probably why we have diabetes in older age as people get older. Right. Okay. Um, we're talking about type two diabetes here. Yes, we're not talking yes. about type one, yes, which is completely yes. different. different. That's nothing to do with it. Okay. Um, age or to do with um, being obese or having too much fat around your belly area. So okay. we, when, when we say diabetes in this regard, we are referring to the type yeah, two diabetes. Type two diabetes. Okay. Thank you, doctor. I uh, um, just. Uh, Another question, please, regarding sugar. Now, the effect that um, starchy carbohydrate, am I right? Yeah. As on the body sugar level, is it the same effect that uh, sugar from fizzy drinks, from pastries, is it the same effect that it has? It has? Yeah, because as you know, the sugar from the fizzy, that's just sugar. You know, that's like sugar, refined sugar. So those ones will raise your blood sugar quite quickly. Because if you drink Coke, a kind of Coke right now, your blood sugar goes so high and then your body starts to go into oh, high blood sugar, insulin. So what happens is that the body releases the insulin, crashes the blood sugar, you feel very hungry again, you take another thing. So it's like you're giving yourself a spike. You know, blood sugar goes so high. So all those, you know, fizzy drinks and those kind of things, refined sugars, they will release the, in, the, the, they will increase your blood glucose quite quickly. They'll give you spikes, which means the blood glucose shoots up so quickly, and the body produces the insulin quickly. The insulin tries to bring it down. And you know, when the insulin brings out your blood glucose, if you have low blood glucose quickly, sharply as well, you develop what we call hypoglycemia. That's why people feel very hungry and they're shaky. They want to eat something quickly. So they go and snack on something again. So it's a sequence. It goes up, it goes down. But if you're taking something that's going to release the blood sugar so slowly, so that it's slowly released, the insulin is doing the job a bit more slowly. So you stay full for longer and there's no spike. So you don't have to keep snacking in between. And that will maintain your metabolism a lot more better than you taking things that will cause spike in your blood sugar. And so the insulin is doing this, going up and about because it has to keep releasing, I mean the pancreas rather, has to keep re releasing the insulin to curb the high level of the blood sugar. It crashes your blood sugar so low, you're like, I'm feeling very hungry, I need to eat something again. Then you eat something quickly and then you're snacking in between, you're eating several times and you're not feeling full. So really, too much sugar is a quick pathway to gaining weight because yes. you end up overeating. Yes. Because you eat a bit more yeah, and you gain weight. Better. Yes, and yes, it's a vicious cycle. And if you then don't do any exercise as well, you, you've been sedentary. So it's just a vicious cycle. The more you're not exercising, the more weight you, you gain. And the more weight you gain, the more the risk of you developing obesity, which is going to be a risk factor for diabetes, for cancers, for gallbladder diseases, for arthritis. So it's, it, it's, it's a vicious cycle. So it's just like an open door, really, for so yeah. many. So Lots many of, of other things that we don't yeah. know. We don't you know, know really. We, we, are not, we, are, we are not aware that, oh, it's because of this. That's why I've had this. So the, the, the thing is not to gain the weight in the first place. Okay. And the way to do that is to watch what we are eating, make sure we do regular exercising, just to make sure we are maintaining healthy weight. Okay. That will go a long way. Okay. I've heard some people say, oh, I don't take... Um, refined sugar. I really don't take more, but I just take honey. Yeah. Is it the same? Okay, yes. So, honey is also as a form of sugar, right? So, honey is, um, the only thing with honey is that it will release, it release the sugar a bit slower than if you take, you know, well, so when we talk about sugar, we're talking about um, sucrose, which is the sugar we put in our tea. Okay, so some people take honey in place of putting sugar, they put honey. It raises your blood sugar slower than sugar, but it's still got sugar in it, okay? And um, so that's the only difference between honey and sugar. Your blood sugar will be raised, but it won't be as quickly. There will be no spike as if you've taken sugar. And also honey, but we need to be careful because honey's got a slightly more calorie than sugar. 
So okay. the, 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 the advice is to everything in moderation. In moderation. Okay? Because sometimes, oh, honey is good. So they now start piling on honey. And <laughs> so whatever we do, honestly, anything in the excess is bad. Yeah. Moderation is a key. So we're going it. to take honey a little bit. But we shouldn't fool ourselves that, oh, I'm taking honey, so I'm not taking sugar. Well, yeah, you're taking sugar, but it's just a different form of sugar. So as you said, there are different form of sugars, you know. You say, I'm not taking sugar, but if you're taking oranges and apples, it's got sugar in it. So it's a, it's a form of sugar, but it's a different form. So there are lots of different form of sugars. So I would just say the, the, the advice is do everything in moderation. Okay. I'll give a good example. I had a patient that we diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And when we looked into it and everything, we realized that actually this chappy is been piling up on plenty and plenty of fruit juices and drinking and eating plenty and plenty of, you know, sugar. there are some fruits that have got high sugar content, especially our tropical fruits. Again, goes back to us, Africa River. All the fruits that we have are the ones with high level of sugar. Our bananas, pineapples, mangoes, oranges, all the things you find in Africa, they have high level of sugar. So this gentleman, Actually, we realized that it was because he was eating large and large amounts of fruit and drinking lots of fruit juices. He thinks he was doing good. He said it's good to take fruit. So he said, well, why not? So everything in moderation. So when this chappy stopped, reduced the content, the quantity of, his, of this sugary fruit that I was taking, his blood sugar went back to normal. And he didn't, actually didn't have diabetes. It was just because of the large amount of um, sugar that was consuming from the fruit. So let's remember that moderation is the key. If they so say really? fruit is good for you, don't pile up on too much of it. <laughs> and also the type of fruits that you have as well. So yeah. Really in, like I said, in the tropics, our fruits are actually very, in very sugar. sugary. Like yeah. uh, bananas, pineapple. oranges, pineapples, name it. The ones that have got low sugar content, which we call low GI fruits, yeah. are strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, plums. I don't think they are that common. Yeah. They're not tropical fruits. Okay. Of course, you can find them, you can buy them. They'll be more expensive, but they got low level of sugar compared to our mangoes, our bananas, our oranges, our pineapples. Okay, so really, the key thing uh, is moderation. Moderation, yes. To be able to, you know, uh, okay. Um, somebody asked me a question a while ago about uh, using sweetener to replace sugar. Is it, is it advisable? Is it good for our health, overall health? Well, with regards to sweetener, there's been a lot has been said about sweetener. There was a time it was said that, oh, it's got all sorts of things. It's got aspartame. It's got this in it. We're not sure whether it's carcinogenic. There's no evidence that it is. But really, I mean, for people that have got diabetes that really want to avoid sugar, want to sweeten up their food, a little bit of it might be what they need to be adding on. But at the end of the day, just know that it's, it's an addictive. It's not natural, if you get okay. what I mean. So, okay. yes, it's not sugar. It will sweeten your food. It's got other things in it, which, yeah, there's been... The evidence is not robust that it could cause harm. So, well, you can if that's what you want to do. But ideally, it will probably be if you're going to take sugar in small quantity. And if you've got diabetes, you may want to avoid sugar entirely. Entirely. Because you know your body, you haven't got the, your pancreas is not doing its job as it should. So taking sugar when you have diabetes is a bit, you're pushing it a bit too, you know. So you may want to, if you haven't got diabetes, yes, you can take it in moderation. Just be careful so that you don't end up having it by taking too much of that. So we're not saying you cannot take sugar at all. It's not a no-no, but it's a matter of, you need to be careful. And the reason also, which we also need to talk about, to mention by the side, is that sugar can be addictive. Okay. So we need to be careful. Some, I read on one of the, some years ago on the British Medical Journal, and it was so strong. They quoted it as, oh, sugar is, should be classified as a hard drug because it's addictive <laughs> and it's dangerous. I was like, oh, mine, really? Is it that bad? You know? Yes, it's addictive. Some people will find out that they crave sugar. They just okay. feel like I need to have this thing. You know, if I don't have it, they start to feel unwell. Because some people have what they call, they said, I've got sweet tooth. You know, that they really need to eat something sweet. So I, I, my advice is that you need to substitute that with something else. I mean, okay. blueberry is very sweet. Strawberry is very sweet, you know. A little bit of dark chocolate is fine. Some people say it's not as sweet, you know, dark chocolate. But actually, 85% dark chocolate is good. 
also a little bit. Not that you're going. It's to not very it. sweet. It has this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> some people don't like it. They prefer the milk chocolate, but actually dark chocolate is meant to be better. It's anything above eighty-five percent. So it's just to be careful to 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 try and watch it. Yes, because you can get addicted to sugar that you will actually struggle to stop taking it or to reduce the quantity of the sugar. All right, thank you, doctor. So is brown sugar still on sugar? <laughs> is brown sugar better than white sugar? <laughs> yes. So or is it the same? So we're going to say what exactly is brown sugar? Okay, so sugar, like I said, the sugar we talked about is actually made, it's made from sugar cane or sugar beet. That's what sugar is made from. And also brown sugar is made from that. So typically brown sugar is white sugar that divided what we call molasses. And that's what gave it the color. Okay. Okay. So brown sugar and white sugar is the same thing, apart from that brown sugar has got slightly higher some of the minerals that we have in sugar, like calcium, iron, potassium, is a little bit higher in brown sugar than in white sugar. And also, the brown sugar has got slightly less calories than white sugar. But basically, it's almost the same thing, apart from that. It's slightly less calorie. So you may say, well, if I'm going to take sugar, maybe I'll take brown sugar, because it's a little bit better than taking white sugar. Okay. But at the same time, I don't want us to go, for, oh, brown sugar is fine, so you then carbohydrate. Okay. The sugar is a carbohydrate. Yeah. And most of our carbohydrates, when they get broken down, they get re sugar gets released from the carbs. Okay. So really, it's not just about saying, okay, I don't take uh, fizzy drinks. I don't take. Uh, I don't take juice. I don't eat cake. I don't eat cake. You know, I don't take donuts or meat pies, so I'm fine. Yeah. It is possible to, you know, to overload your system yeah. with too much sugar. If you take too much of carbohydrate, yes, even if definitely. it is complex carbohydrate, definitely. Sure. Because if you eat a lot, if you read some of the health books, the nutrition books, yes. they advise you that even if you're going to take carbohydrate, let your carbohydrate source be from complex carbohydrate because of high fiber content. Yeah. But is it still possible to take too much of carbohydrate from complex yeah. source? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, anything, your carbohydrates will get broken down. So you got starch, if you look at starch, starch is like glucose molecules holding hands. Yeah. Okay? So starch is made of lots of glucose molecules. Yeah. Joined together. Yeah. So they need to get broken down to get absorbed. Yes. Okay. And when they get broken down, they get broken down into glucose. The only thing is that the non-starchy one gets broken down slowly than others. So it's still going to get broken down. So if there's anything we're going to take away from today is... Do everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Anything in excess is actually bad. And then be, be, look at what we're doing. Look at the, the quality of what we're having. You know, it, make sure you're eating real food. You know, not fake food. And when I say fake food, they are processed food. Okay. Because processed food has got a lot of things that is harmful to our body. Things that can lead to diabetes and heart disease, stroke and all sorts. So let's eat real food. Real food means something you've cooked from the scratch. Something that is you know, healthy food, real food, not fake food, not processed food, not something that is fried or something that you just, fast food that you just buy that it takes about. Real food takes a long time to make. It takes time to get real food, to cook your food from the scratch and, you know, rather than something that is just quickly, you just get it, you know. And so we need to think about what we're what, what we doing. Think what about doing. what we are eating. And focus more on the quality. Quality, yeah. And not just be taste driven. Yes, of course, I know we need to enjoy our food. I mean, every time I've done this, people are thinking, what are you talking about? Are you a killjoy or something? What's the point? Sometimes, what's the point in eating food if it's, I'm not going to enjoy it? What, what's the point? I understand, yes, we need to enjoy our food, but I think it, it takes time. You find that your taste buds start to adjust. And if you look at it this way, look at the consequences. Maybe that's why I painted that picture of what happened to food. Okay. Just imagine that this food I'm eating, what does it do to my body? Imagine your pancreas is somewhere there in your belly area. Imagine that hormone that you can't see, it's called insulin. Imagine it's struggling because you've given yourself too much load of glucose and it really can't do the job. And imagine what that's going to lead to. So I think when we think about the consequences of what we are doing, yeah. That may help us to adjust and to, you know, do things in moderation and make a choice. It's, it's about choices, about changing your, your, you know, 
making making a right choice it's like you know so then choose to okay i want to it's not in a day it's gradual okay i want to change my lifestyle just like if you want to do exercise as well i want to change my lifestyle i want to i want to watch my food i want to make sure i choose healthy option i want to make sure i'm eating real food not fake food you know real food yeah so what about how does dieting affect our sugar level you know there are a lot of diet i know that uh people define diet in different ways yeah uh some use diet in the context of what you take daily yeah but i'm using it in the context of different diet programs out there yeah different crash programs that you can go on especially people that are concerned about losing weight how does that affect our blood sugar level okay well with regards to dieting there are, like you said there are lots of diet program out there um so many of them the, the the main downside to most of this is that yes we lose weight but do they maintain that weight loss most of the time no yeah so <laughs> how, how many people actually maintain that weight loss for instance yeah. you've, you've gone through a, a crash program of dieting you've lost the weight and you've gone back to your old weight because most of those dieting you can't sustain them long term some people say they're taking shakes how long are you going to take the shakes for for the rest of your life you mean you're not going to eat anything again so that's why i i like to be a bit more reasonable okay let's do something that you can you can maintain, maintain. long time be yeah. sensible yeah. and that's what we're talking about yes if you know you need to lose weight then you need to watch it you want to lose weight but then you're drinking coke coca-cola for instance are you sure you want to lose weight no you're not you want to lose weight you're eating mcdonald's you're eating big mac are you sure you want to lose weight <laughs> no so if you can do a crash program of dieting and then you've lost weight but are you able to maintain that weight loss just like people that come and say can i have a tablet i'm saying okay yeah, i can give you that tablet holy stuff you're going to lose weight in two years, three years time. You know, you, are, you can't be on the tablets forever. You go back to your old ways of being sedentary, not doing any form of exercise at all, eating too late in the night, eating the wrong food, taking all those things, and you pile up the weight again. So what's the point at the end of the day? So I just said, if you want to really lose weight, yes, you need to think about what you're doing. If you're losing weight, you need to consider your, making sure you're eating the right kind of food, a very good way to lose weight is to cut down on your carbs. You will lose weight, but are you going to maintain it? I, I, I have a very funny example of one of my patients that came in one day and said, doctor, I'm dreaming of chicken. I said, what? Why? I think he started doing vegan diet. He stopped taking. So he said, doctor, I'm struggling. Honestly, I dream of chicken. Uh, and, it's, and the guy is Caucasian. You know, he's not even Afro-Caribbean that, you know, we like our chicken. Basically, yeah. you know, tell an Afro Caribbean to be vegetarian, that's like a joke because without that, you know, we like our beef and chicken. This guy is Caucasian, he said, I'm actually dreaming. I said, I think you should go back to your chicken. The fact that you're dreaming of chicken means you need your chicken. Please go and eat your chicken. Just make sure you do things in moderation. I just found that so funny. That's what he said that he stopped eating chicken and beef. But oh, he missed that. Sometimes he said he cheats, you know, sometimes doctor, I just go and get some chicken. And I said, just go back on your chicken. Really, who are you, you know? So that means you can't maintain that lifestyle. This guy started dreaming of his chicken because he was doing this diet when he stopped eating anything, wanted to want to take any chicken and everything. I believe God gave us everything, you know, freely to enjoy. I'm not for, oh, you don't, don't eat chicken, don't eat beef, don't eat that, but be sensible. If you're going to eat beef, lean beef, not the one with fat. Because beef, you get a lot of iron and everything. Organic beef, you know, it's good in moderation. Not every, anything in excess is bad. Is bad. So, okay. yeah, we have everything is there for you to enjoy. Food is there yeah. for you to enjoy. Enjoy food, but be sensible when you're enjoying the food. Eat the right kind. Eat real food, not fake food. Not Eat the right food. kind of food. Avoid processed food. Avoid refined sugars, you know. So, yeah. So, enjoy what you're having, but let's be sensible <laughs> with it. So, oh. with dieting, honestly, most people can't keep up. Yes, you will lose weight, but at the end of the day, if you go back to your old ways and the way you've been before, you then gain the weight again, and it's a vicious cycle. But if you maintain something that you can, that you can keep up with long term, which means I'm going to be sensitive, I'm going to cut down on my carbs, I'm going to think about what I'm eating, I'm going to eat the right kind of carbs, I'm going to re reduce my portion size, I'm going to do exercise, I'm going to maintain a regular form of exercise. If you can keep up to that, maintain that, then on the long term, you're going to maintain the weight you've lost. Not doing a crash program of eating of 
drinking shakes and then after a while you go back to <laughs> you, know, you go back to your normal, yeah. normal way of life. I think because uh, that brings me now to that brings me to my next question really. What's the uh, the role of exercise in you know uh, balancing the sugar? Does it have, is there any connection between yes. the benefit of exercise and being able to regulate uh, the sugar level in the body? Yeah, definitely. Exercise will help you to regulate your sugar level. So, in fact, when we talk about type 2 diabetes, one of the risk factors for it is having a sedentary lifestyle. So it's not just food only. So people that have got sedentary lifestyle, and when I say sedentary lifestyle, there are people that don't exercise, like sitting on the couch, yeah. watch TV, read a book, no form of exercise at all. We advise at least you need to do exercise regularly, as you know, in a week, some people say three to four times a week. Now that we have a pandemic, it should be every day. We need to get out of the house every day and do our walks. You know, just get out and do something. When we do exercise, what happens to our body is that we regulate our blood sugar level. And that's why people that have got diabetes, for instance, and they're taking insulin, when they want to do exercise, we tell them to be careful, reduce their level of insulin. Because exercise, we drop their blood sugar. So if they're not careful, they can actually go into hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. So if you go to some people that have got diabetes, maybe they're taking the injection. When they want to do exercise, we rather say you reduce your injection or eat something, eat something sweet before you go, or take it, take like um, chocolate with you. Because after you've worked out or done exercise, you notice that you feel tired because you've dropped your blood sugar. So imagine if you're doing that regularly, you maintain a regular balanced exercise. So you're regulating your blood sugar you're going to eventually lose weight. So if you combine the exercise with the food, not some people that they would say, okay, I'll do exercise, I'll eat the food, I'll go and burn it out. We are eating the wrong kind of food. I think it's combining everything, doing everything together. So yes, there's a good place in combining your exercise with everything we're talking about, the diet and the food. If you combine exercise with it, you are likely to have a, achieve a better result than just doing one part of it only. So everything works together. Really, so so it's uh it's all about moderation. Really, the yeah. the key thing from the sugar intake yeah. is about moderation. And I think if I'm to summarize everything, it's about lifestyle. Yeah, putting in place a form of uh, the kind of habits that you can sustain Excellent. in terms of your food intake. Yeah. What I've discovered is that sometimes people want the easy way out. Yeah. They want something they can do within a short time, mm. you know, and, uh, but it takes a lot. It takes much more effort for right. you to work on your lifestyle. Sure. And I think that's what we are really saying that, you know, um, yes, you can eat good food and mm. once in a while, there's nothing stopping you if you want to give yourself a treat, sure. but it's just about that principle of moderation. Right. And not pushing your body to the level where you now have that roller coaster experience of a spike in your blood sugar level, it comes down, you raise it up again, and then it comes down really. Wow. Thank you so much, doctor. It's been an honor having you here. And uh, it's been a learning time. And I, I'm very sure that our viewers we learn a lot from this. Thank so you. thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye All bye. right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay.